Hello and welcome to Wandering Wanda. I'm Ariel and we are here at Cove Oceanfront Campground in Parker's Cove, Nova Scotia. Copy of the map. The owner, host, she did help me park. It took three times for me to actually back into this site. And we are over a hill up here. Some of us is down there. Less over there is not even leveled. You can see the pitch from here. Not really happy about that. <clears throat> not even our site but you know what it there's no excuse for it for his rig not being leveled we are here for two nights the setup here is very it's not the spaces aren't very large picnic tables right here for the other site so this is our setup it's very low to the ground which I understand for snow purposes. However, the electrical, they could have put it up more. Look how low this is. <clears throat> and the sewer's up high. <laughs> well, we do have water in, water out. I don't know what the water pressure is like yet. So I do like the fact that there is three services here, even though it's only 30 amps. <clears throat> so no one else is going to fit over here. They're, all the A classes are too big. <clears throat> it's been raining all morning. The sun looks like it's coming out. So the very muddy and the ground is very squishy but that's not the park's fault that's the rain however we are made to park over there again I had to uh, unhitch and I'm essentially blocking the entire road so to when we go to leave they're all pulling out that way and coming this way so no one can leave until I'm completely hitched up and have all my utilities put away. Which I can't because the truck is way over there. It, this is freaking ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. We're not an A-class. We don't have a basement. The only thing we have is this. And that's where we keep Starling. But all the other utilities is in the back of the truck. So I'm going to have to back up the truck over here. So I can put away all the utilities. Or park it here. When we go to disconnect. <clears throat> that I don't like. Airstreams do not have, they need, they need the back of their truck because that's where we keep all our our supplies okay this is Bruce and Carla over here I guess that's where they're going and they get to leave their toad up there which is nice oh look at all the water coming out You might get the internet. Yeah. Oh, I, I. You might. Yeah. See, the road is mud, but again, not the park's fault. So we are all here 
We all have an ocean view, which is nice. Well, most of us do. But again, the truck is way over there. And that I don't care for. Because again, all my supplies are in the back of the truck. So for me, this is a major inconvenience. Would I stay here again? No. I would not. I would not recommend this park. I would not recommend this park, period. I'm sure yep, there's another is. park where we the park. there's ample room to actually park. I don't, I don't like being given small spaces. I just really don't like it. Okay, the rest of us is up there on the hill. Okay, we're gonna walk around. We're gonna walk down the hill without slipping and falling. Careful, don't slip. We don't want anyone falling and breaking a hip. <laughs> okay, that looks like ours. Yeah, I think this. Oh, I let Ann and Dan borrow it. I got it from Dan. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was up the hill great traffic while I came in and went back up. So okay, me, well, let me... They're yes. borrowing it because Go theirs isn't it. working. Yeah, I'll give it back to you. Okay, I will <laughs> give it back to them okay. to, so they can borrow it again. Okay, Neil and Adele are over here. Well, they gotta pull through. Trash cans over here. I don't even know where the restrooms are. Are there even restrooms here? Oh, all the way up the hill. Oh, all the way up the hill. Oh, it looks pretty down here. Well, they're leveled over here. From where we are, you're not leveled. I know. Right? You you're, you look like this yes, from where our. And that's exactly how we are. <laughs> And that's how we're going to go. Is there a trail going down? Uh, if you would like to get to the beach in our tenting area, which is this way, uh -huh. we have access to the beach on between site 80 and 81. 80 and 81. Yes. Okay. If nobody is camping on site 86, there is private access on that site as well. Okay. And you can use that as well. You can use that as long as nobody's camping there. Okay, 86, 80, 81. All right. I got it, I got it on the 70s. Fort Royal. <laughs> 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 
Is that in German? No, definitely not German. What is that? I speak German. So wow. Likely. Likely. They don't say that he Yeah, he did. did. Likely spoke yeah. They say her. It was like. Yeah, the dirty words. He knew all the dirty words. <laughs> there, there's Bridget. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, the French and Dutch competed in court for the right to his services, and in 1608, the Costa was contracted to act as interpreter for Sieur de Mont on voyages to Canada and the Cape Thank you. Keep going. <laughs> Evidence continues to emerge for an early African present in the Americas. Europeans had employed black interpreters for more than a century by da Costa's time in voyages of the African coast and occasionally in the Americas. <laughs> Jan Rodriguez. Oh, okay. So he's a uh, black African Mexican. Oh wow. Jan Rodriguez, a man of African descent, interpreted for the Dutch in 1613 to 1614 in present-day New York State. Mark Lescarba describes another black man, not the Costa, on board the Jonas in 1606 en route to Port Royal. Research on da Costa continues. So that means they don't know anything. Okay, next. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> now, is he allowed to use that? We don't need a tour guide. We have Bruce. <laughs> a frequent visitor to the region and a devoted student of its history, Harriet Tabor Richardson of Cambridge, Massachusetts, conceived the idea that La 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 should be rebuilt by the descendants of the New Englanders and Virginians who had destroyed the original in 1613. Therefore, they employed uh, 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 to this end. end. No, yeah, no. To this end. No, it says. Therefore, they employed Walt Disney to go through and create <laughs> this oh, yeah. fake See? Disney. This is all created by Walt Disney. Yes. Ridiculous. Let's yes. go home. Let's go I, home. I think it's really nice that they. Have a <laughs> that was good. It's a great it. way to I, no, I have no clue if that's really what it. <laughs> so. I love it. We were on that reading. Yeah, we were on that car right away. Right. Yeah. You know what? I got to tell you. Yeah. 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 Here you'll see original lumber from 1618. Built in this to create this fort. And there, and there is Walt Disney's okay. picture right over there by that window. It looks like Frontierland. Frontierland. Welcome to Port Royal. Now, the name Port Royal is a bit of a misnomer. It's not the name of the building or the site. It was the name of the body of water. All right, this now is called the Annapolis Basin, oh, but go ahead. in the 1600s, by the French, they named this Port Royal. So Royal Port, because it was the most beautiful harbor they've seen in all We've the already been in front of the camera. It's okay. More of the whole French Navy here. <laughs> so that's why it was called Port Royal. So the land around it also became known as Port Royal. And down by, uh, uh, there's a panel by the water. And on that panel, you'll see a map drawn in around 1607 of this area. Wow. And this is called Port Royal. It was drawn by the cartographer on the first expedition. His name was Samuel de Champagne. And he was here for the first three years. So. This site, this is the very beginning of French, of Frenchmen in the New World, in North America. They arrived here in 1604, this was built in 1605, but this wasn't a successful settlement. It only lasted eight years before the English found out about it. Yeah. And so they came up from their settlement in Jamestown, Virginia, <laughs> sailed up here, burnt this down. Oh. And then they went back to Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> So you're from Virginia, are you? No. No? <laughs> you just really like burning French things. I just don't like the French. <laughs> we got tired of the French in Quebec. <laughs> so, the French that were here, they left and went back to France. No one was killed. The English just burnt it down and then said, good luck surviving the winter. But they had a boat nearby, so they went back to France. Except for about a half a <laughs> 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 
show you around your new quarters, get you ready for work for the next year. Are you, are you all ready to work for the next year? Yes. yes. Sheila. There's Is that Sheila? Sheila, <laughs> Sheila I've heard a lot about you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sheila. Sheila, it's great to meet you. <laughs> well, don't worry, you'll all be put to work equally, most of you. <laughs> So, let me just get you acquainted with the place real quick. We have uh, quite a lot of rooms that are uh, around here. So, going in order, this here is our forge. That's where our blacksmith, Mikale, works. Uh, is anybody here the new blacksmith? No, no blacksmiths? Oh, no. Yeah, we got one. oh, we've got one. Oh, perfect. So, you'll be replacing Mikale for the next year in there. Okay. You get paid three times as much as anybody else here. You're also doing about three times the work. <laughs> so you'll be replacing any hinges, uh, you'll be making iron tools for trade, uh, and you'll also be doing any spare woodworking that needs to be done. I, I need a couple of assistants. Uh, I'm sorry, there's no apprentices here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all master craftsmen. We are all master craftsmen, right? Yes, we are. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Have some confidence in yourself. <laughs> Next is our kitchen and bakery. They're attached. There's one large uh, brick oven in the middle uh, that fuels both sides. Is anybody here our new cook? I'll be one. Uh, oh, we've got several. <laughs> I hope you've heard of our favorite dishes here. Boiled goose snow stew and the tail of the beaver. It's absolutely delicious. You can cook it on a pan here. Oh, really? Does, yes. Not because it's the nose, but uh, it's Not a because nice coincidence the there. <laughs> yes, so get acquainted with our meals here. We like to have them uh, every day, every single day. Next is our common room. This is where we all eat for the night. Uh, so we all eat there, the gentlemen and the artisans together, and the governor, and invited Mi'kmaq. We all like to eat in the same room. There's no separate dining and faces on class. It's all the same place. Then we have our workshop. That's where most of you will be doing your work. If you're the carpenter, a tailor, a tanner, a locksmith, you'll be working in there. Upstairs, uh, the second floor is one large room. That's our sleeping quarters for the artisans. So that's all of us. Is, is anybody here a gentleman? None. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> they're, all, they're all a little hoity-toity in my opinion. So that's good we don't have any here. Well, they have their own sleeping quarters, these four chambers over here. So they each have their own room. There's four beds in each one. Uh, and they actually have a bed frame. We up in the artisan's quarters, 
have straw mattresses on the floor. Specifically, there's one type of meal uh, that's very popular around here. It's called the Order of Good Cheer. It's a, uh, does, has, has anybody heard of it before? Wine? It is wine, oh. yes. Lots of wine. Order of Good Cheer was made by Samuel de Champlain uh, during our second winter here. So the first winter, we're in, we're in uh, Ile de Saint Croix. That winter was absolutely devastating. We lost 39 people to scurvy. 39 out of a total 79. So quite a lot of death that first winter. So the second winter, when we moved our habitation here, Samuel de Champlain wanted to help fight this new disease that we weren't sure what caused it. We thought it was just bad air. If the air is bad, you happen to die. It's not a very fun sequence of events. So Samuel de Champlain, he notices that when people eat more, they die less. A revolutionary idea for the time. <laughs> so he creates the order of good cheer, where one gentleman who sits at this table would coordinate with the cook and myself, the baker, and make a grand feast for all the rest of the men. There would be singing, dancing, storytelling, lots of food, and lots of wine. Normally, you're only allowed three half pints of wine per day, but during order of good cheer night, you're allowed as much wine as you can drink. Mm. Very red in the face on those nights. <laughs> so that happens every four nights, and when, the, when one gentleman does it, the next gentleman on the next fourth night will try to make a better feast. So in that way, it's a little bit of a friendly competition between the gentlemen to make a better feast than the other gentleman could make. And in that way, we are both feeding all the people, raising morale, and giving the gentlemen something to do. <laughs> because they don't often have things to do, they're gentlemen, 
they don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? They're freeloaders. Yeah. A little bit, yes. <laughs> don't tell them I said that. I resent that. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. They won't hold it again. Forgive me. He's our gentleman. A total, uh, how many uh, total men would have been in here? So about 45. Okay. There's 30 or so artisans who are sleeping upstairs. You've got 15 gentlemen that can sit in those quarters over there, uh, our governor, but we also have any Mi'kmaq that uh, are willing to come are also invited to the, group, the feasts. So uh, the governor sits here, and member two, the Mi'kmaq chief, was sitting in that chair there. Good morning, member two. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> any Mi'kmaq women invited to the thing of cheer? Member, member two and his whole family is invited. So any women in his family are allowed to come, Nobody else. Just member two and his family. Oh, okay. That's me. You divorced him. You divorced him. You divorced him. You divorced him. You You're learning. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm fast. <laughs> What did the gentlemen do? They didn't have a job. Why were they even here? Uh, so, so they did have jobs. Like I said, there's things like surgeons, poets, the priests are gentlemen. Okay. Um, okay. But for the most part, their job is to do the jobs that the artisans can't. Okay. So things like hunting out in the woods. Uh, none of the artisans are hunters, so the gentlemen would do that. Uh, if you need people to farm, the gentlemen might do that. Uh, if you need some interpersonal relations between uh, visitors or guests or doing the trading, all the gentlemen do that. Uh, the artisans are just doing their one job. They're carpenting or whatever it is. Uh, you do it for three hours a day and then you relax <laughs> for the rest of the day. Until of course the governor calls you to do some other job and that cycle repeats. <laughs> they work for three hours? That's it? I'm so yeah, he's Three hours is quite a lot. You can oh, tell. He's God, the now. no. Yes. <laughs> I want my full eight hours. I... <laughs> Please don't bang the pewter. <laughs> this governor's out. Yes. <laughs> I think this governor's going to be floating. <laughs> you might have a rebellion on your hands. The governor died accidentally. That's what I'm talking about. Between here and the bus, right? Hey, you that coffin up there? No, I think, <laughs> oh. I think it happened in the blacksmith shop. <laughs> yeah, so all of the dishes here are made out of pewter. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you ever heard the phrase, mad as a hatter. Yeah. Uh, there's a very specific reason that phrase is there. It's because hatters use mercury in their fashions. They use uh, mercury, which is a very poisonous chemical. Yeah. Right. We would never use something so poisonous, ever. Now, our pewter is infused with lead. Right, exactly. Fun fact. Right. Which has no problems. Yeah. I'm sure it didn't contribute to anything wrong with this house. <laughs> Okay, welcome everyone to Fort Ed. We're excited to be here today. I just want to give you a, bit of, a little bit of history before you start and what you're going to see today, just so you're aware when you go off. It'll be a little bit more in depth as we split you into your two groups. Half of you will be with Lucas for the first 20, 30 minutes, and the other half you'll be with me. We'll learn a little bit about the I know. <laughs> you know it's intense. Hey? And they said common sense was gone. Gone. <laughs> I want Lucas. Okay, we'll go Lucas. Oh, go ahead. You're the one giving the tour. <laughs> I just like to try to get everyone to get a spot here. Is that a quilt? It's needlepoint. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so what you see in front of you here is uh, uh, the result of about seven to eight years of effort. Uh, it's all needle point straight work. Uh, so you see quite a lot of uh, fine details and a lot of, um, you know, small busy work. <laughs> uh, now, Posters with words on it. Lots of posters with words on it. You gotta take a look at this. What does that say? It's wilting. It's not looking too good, is it? No. <laughs> it's wilting. <laughs> not too much hope. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a little short on that. Well, they need to trim it properly. It's not trimmed properly. <laughs> New Jersey, no. Long Island, I can't think of that now. You know, where are the Vanderbilts and uh, um, New Jersey? Is it New Jersey? No. Across the bridge there? Across the bridge. Yes. They had a botanical garden there, and this was like 45 years ago. And I found some floral combinations, and I took some pictures, and I came back to Texas, and that's why I decorated my garden. <laughs> It was with the combinations you know that they what? put That's... together. <laughs> I just you like take, the color you take scheme, you know. Someone else's idea, yeah. make it your own. I love roses. I do too. Have our, you been to our the... property was lined with roses. Yeah. Have you been to the Huntington Gardens there in California? Oh yeah. It's a great place for lunch. <laughs> yes, it is a good place. We had lunch there too, yeah. Girlfriends and I used to go up there, have lunch, yeah. walk around. I love that. And we had to leave before 3 o'clock because of the traffic. Traffic, yeah. Mm hmm See, now I'm partial to the yellow roses there. We had, we had a lot of Mr. Lincolns, and I don't see any here. Mm. Final notes about this RV park. See, I'm in the middle of the road, blocking everyone. So every a lot of people already left. There's two, two here, so I can make the turn. The views are absolutely wonderful. Sunset was magnificent. So it's got trade-offs. The RV park owner here is, is a bitch. She will tell you how to park, what to do, Sheila and Tom was next to us. She wanted to back in and she said, no, you pull through or you face forward towards the ocean. Seriously, let us park the way we want to. <clears throat> so the inconvenience of not having the truck 
here was really I didn't like it I like having the truck nearby because everything I have for setup tear down is in the back of the bed also way up on the hill is where the restrooms are way up there the building closest to us is the laundry room believe it or not so it's a height so if you've got any sort of disability do not stay at this park I don't recommend staying at this park to begin with this park is a no for me the view of the water again is wonderful but is it worth the inconvenience of the park itself no it's not worth it between the owner being a bitch all the facilities being up 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 on a hill and the fact that you cannot even park your car next to your rig ridiculous absolutely ridiculous <sighs>